Hello everyone, my name is Tobare Owe, owner of The Petal Effect, a floral and design studio dedicated to amplifying and celebrating Black voices. Welcome back to our second tutorial video for our Mayesh Design Star series. For this video, we'll be going over how to create a floral fascinator for your very own styled shoot. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna begin with our mechanics. Now, mechanics are so important because they can literally make or break your design. Your mechanics are the foundation of the design and sometimes once you're deep into designing, it's a bit difficult to backtrack and fix your mechanics. So let's do our best to get it right, right from the start. The first thing you wanna do is build the base of your design. Start by putting a layer of cling wrap to your glass head. The next thing you're gonna do is apply duct tape to your glass head in a horizontal and vertical motion, making sure to cover the cling wrap and adding a few layers for sturdiness. After that, take the base you've created off the glass head and cut it into a dome shape. Make sure to shape it where it's away from the face, but enough support to hold the flowers. Next, punch a pair of holes on either side of your base with your knife, making four holes in total. Then take two chenilles and weave them separately into the holes you've created on both sides. Sometimes I punch in an additional pair of holes in the middle of my base and add chenilles there too for extra support in the middle of your base. But do what you feel is best for you. Once the chenilles are in place, put your base back on the glass head. Use the glass head as a guide to determine if your base is too big. Trim it as needed. As an optional step, you may want to take a piece of green floral tape and secure your base to the glass head so your fascinator doesn't move around or fall over as you build it. Now I didn't do this step for this tutorial because I created it on set and didn't need to travel with it, but I typically do so just to avoid any accidents. Next, take your chicken wire and roll it into a cone shape. Then, you want to determine what shape you will create with your design. For this particular design, I'm creating something that's asymmetrical. Shape your chicken wire in a way that supports your vision for your fascinator. Then, attach the chicken wire to the base by feeding your chenille stems through the holes and twisting them to secure your chicken wire in place. Make sure to secure tightly so the chicken wire doesn't move once you start adding flowers. All right, so here are some quick tips for you all. My first quick tip is to buy more flowers that are hardier and can last out of water. This will help you tremendously on set with not having to replace flowers on the fascinator and having to alter your design. My next tip is for more delicate flowers, put them in water tips before adding them to your design to ensure they last the duration of your shoot. You can insert one bloom in each tip or insert multiple stems. Tip number three is when you want to secure a flower in position, you can either just stick it in there and it holds itself, or if you need extra support, you can use a glue gun to hold it in place. Now the reason I say just stick it in there or use a glue gun is because this fascinator is specifically being used for a shoot. If it was needed to last longer, I would highly recommend using a floral adhesive glue. All 
All right, now my final tip for this section is when designing your fascinator, use the golden triangle rule as a guide for placement of each floral element. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google it because this is a game changer. This will help you and your design from being symmetrical or being stiff. Play with depth, color combinations, spacing, and things of that nature to create a design that is dynamic and pleasing to the eye. Start by adding in the base flowers. These flowers are used to build your foundation and hide your mechanics, so make sure you keep this in mind when selecting what flowers you want to use for your base. Flowers I used as my base are amaranthus, phlox, delphiniums, limonium, dried plumosa, and Italian ruscus. Just like when you're making an arrangement, you want your base to help you hide your mechanics and set the tone of your design. Next, you want to add your accent flowers. These flowers are your middle ground between your base flowers and your focal flowers. They are a level up from your base while providing accenting support for the focal flowers you will be later including. Add your accent flowers to begin creating depth to your piece. I also sometimes group my accent flowers together to a specific area in my design. Flowers I used as my accents are carnations, spray roses, lisianthus, and mums. Again, just like when you're making an arrangement, you want your accent to be that in-between stage where they stick out more than your base flowers, but will support and not overpower your focal flowers. I also use them to really help me hide the rest of my mechanics. So make sure to tuck some of your accents in more tightly into your design. Next, add in the focal flowers. These flowers are meant to be the focal point of your piece, so make sure you're adding them in ways that allow them to shine. Use the accent flowers in your piece as a guide for placement of your focal flowers. I also like grouping these as well. Flowers I used as my focals are dahlias, anthuriums, garden roses, peonies, monunculus, tulips, and philanopsis orchids. This stage is pretty much where you are completing your fascinator. All your mechanics are hidden and your crown is filled with beautiful blooms. The final step is to add the airy and delicate flowers. These flowers are meant to add the finishing, whimsical, and magical touch to your piece. For me, these pieces bring out the playful and youthful vibes into your design. Flowers I use as my airy and delicate selections are Tweedia and Gloriosa. Spray water onto your fascinator once you're done and throughout the shoot. 
Though most of your stems are out of water and without a water source, this will ensure that they will still be hydrated so they can last the duration of your shoot. When putting your crown on the model's head, make sure you have someone there that can help you hold it in place and pass you alligator clips, bobby pins, or whatever is needed on set. Also, you want to make sure you're paying attention on set to what shots are being captured. You do not want to get your pictures and videos back and see there's like a big hole in your piece that you could have avoided and fixed while you were on set. There is so much moving parts in making your shoot a success, but please, please, please remember to have fun. It's just flowers. Relax and enjoy the experience. <laughs>